you know, I don't, I don't always understand why I'm drawn to do things, but when I get a certain feeling about something, I trust that and I follow it until it becomes clear, you know, and every now and then it's like, oh, you know, it's not the thing that I thought it was, but it leads to something else. And that's okay too. But each thing leads to something else. And so when I get that intuition, you know, and when our listeners get that intuition, I think it's important to follow that and see where it leads. Welcome to Rochester Business Connections, powered by Balbert Marketing, LLC, where I get the chance to chat with Rochester, New York's very best business owners, entrepreneurs, and thought leaders. I am your host, Ben Albert. Don't forget to subscribe and remember, we don't do advertisements. My fee for this show is simple. If you gain value from the episode, personally share with a friend and explain your favorite part. Let's get started. I am here with Emily Carpenter. Emily, what's up? How are you today? I'm great, Ben. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm I'm excited because I relate to you in a lot of ways. You're a woman of ultimately a lot of interests and a lot of endeavors. Um, a lot of people already know you from Whizbang Web Solutions, your company. So I want to start there. I want to introduce ultimately what you do as Whizbang, but I'm also really excited um, to hear a little bit more about your story and all these other things. I'll read it off. I'm going to use my cheat sheet here, but you're the founder of Savvy Nom Nom. You, you hosted a podcast, Choice Happens, a blog, Marvy Moms. So you have a lot of interests, but right. whiz bang, that's your number one project these days, right? Do, do you want to introduce what you do at whiz bang? Yeah, sure. Uh, so whiz bang web solutions, um, it'll be 16 years next month that I've been in business creating websites for mostly small businesses and entrepreneurs and helping people just figure out the web and how to navigate that and have a successful business online. Yeah, I I do similar things. So I agree. It's like one of the most important things in 2020s to have a great impression online, to have a good website. And right. Do you work with any particular kind of client? You said a lot of small businesses, entrepreneurs. If I'm listening and I haven't decided to work with Ben because maybe I wasn't a good fit as a right. listener, what what kind of clients do you do well with? Yeah, that's great, Ben. I um I believe in abundance in the universe. So Same. I feel like people work with who they're meant to work with. And so I want to find clients that feel comfortable with me and that I also feel good about working with. And so there's always like this little dance to find out if we're a good fit and see what those, you know, if that can work. And I, I tend to draw people that are similar to me in my interests and in things. So I do have a lot of people that are interested in healthy living and natural lifestyle. Um, so I get a lot of clients like that, but also I've worked with industrial companies and I've always said what I love about my job and what I do is I can feel sort of like Mr. Rogers. I get to go behind the scenes and see how people work and what they do. Yeah. And I can feel like a lot of times I feel like I am part of the company and the companies like to work with me because I am just like another member of the team for them. And I get to know exactly what they do and help them to show other people what that is so that they can bring in business. I love it. I mean, uh, I'm thinking of this as I go, but there's three kinds of working relationships. We'll do four kinds of working relationships. Yeah. There's a company that's very non-personal, but gets the job done and really helps you. There's the non-personal company that doesn't get the job done and it was a complete waste of money. You totally got burned. Right. Then there's the person that is super personal, but maybe the relationship isn't great, but at least, you know, you learn together. And yeah. then there's the super personal and effective. And I think, you know, as long as the job's getting done, okay, you made a good decision. But if right. you can have someone who's personal, a member of your team, and you can grow each other's businesses together and be successful, seems yeah. like a no brainer. You said abundance. It's about finding who's going to mesh well with your vision um, and exactly. your purpose and what you need. So 
Yeah, I'd love yeah. to collaborate with you on projects in the future, but we yeah, can talk about awesome. that. We can talk about that offline. Yeah. Um, you've been doing it for 15 years. I'm going to be honest. So I'm good at what I do. I yeah. haven't been doing it nearly as long. So I'm curious of any major changes that you've noticed or any big changes in the online environment from when you started your business to a completely different world today. Yeah. Uh, it's funny because when I first started out, my biggest competition was the yellow pages. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I would sit in networking meetings next to the yellow pages guy who was selling yellow pages advertising and people would spend $30,000 a year for yellow page advertisement and not blink because they thought they just had to do that. It was a, a cost of doing business. But when they looked at a couple of thousand dollars for a website, they thought that was too much money to spend. And so my biggest competition was that and convincing people that being online was the way to go. And so now people have the sense that they should be online, but they want to do it themselves, right? Because there's a yeah. lot of tools out there to do it yourself. And that can be a great way to start out. And a lot of my best customers are ones who have tried doing it themselves. And then they see the value in hiring somebody that can add the expertise and just shortcut some of the success for them. So, yeah, but the, I mean, as far as technology, some of that has changed, but the basics are always the same. It's creating content that people, that resonates with people, that gives them information that they need and that they want to share and, and show other people. So that's, that's never changed. I, and it never will change. Yeah. I always say, you know, you got to make a good first impression. If right. anything, it's changed where it's more important because that info on your business card can be Googled. And then that's when the media online marketing plays its course. Do you look like junk or do you make an right. awesome first impression? I don't oh, think that'll yeah. ever change. I yeah. I, and that's the first thing I do. Maybe it's just because I'm a website designer, but when I get yeah. someone's card or get their information, the first thing I do is look at their website. And when I see one that needs some help, I just, you know, I cringe. I want to like, I just want to change that for them. Um, because I know that it can have such an impact when someone goes to your site. You know, I, I recently made a decision on where to have a repair made based on an old website and something that was more current. And that was, that was a deciding factor, you know, I maybe rather than like wanting to use them as a service, I almost wanted to sell my service to them that I, you know, I didn't, I don't, I have, right. I've, re I've refrained from doing that over the years, but it, it is difficult because I, just, I know that I can help companies. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and it's a shame when the most qualified person for the job doesn't get the job for something that is kind of arbitrary. It's just the way your website looks, but we, right. we live in an image-based world where the everyone has a phone. So if you do something stupid in public, someone could pull it out, take a picture. Right. We're on Zoom all the time. Your website is a reflection of your business and you could be it the is. best contractor on earth and you're going to get a lot of referrals, but that website really isn't an, an extra step to I think yeah. a lot sometimes it can depend on what the what the industry is sure that, you know so it is I don't you know I probably shouldn't say this but it's true is that it can depend on what your industry is so there are certain industries that you can expect someone that's to not be tech savvy and maybe not have the best website or it'd be a little outdated and there are certain industries that that is more true than not that the website is outdated um, but there are other industries like in technology field that you want something to be updated and look like it's being cared for. And even my own website wasn't that way for a long time. And I've recently updated it because I was so embarrassed every time to show anyone my website. So that's my new thing is, you know, be um, excited to share your website again, because yeah. if you're like at the point where you don't want to, you want to cross out that website address on your business card, when you hand it over to somebody that it might be time to look at having a redesign. I'm with you. And it is industry specific, but I do kind of want to mention, let's say you're a commercial contractor, right? You don't show up to work in your underwear. 
<laughs> yeah. You right. might be wearing jeans and a dirty shirt, but you have some presentation there. You don't want yeah. your website to look like you don't have to wear a suit and tie like a tech industry website. But right. it, it's important to at least look, you know. Well, if it's date. let's say like even with that, like if it's, you know, an older gentleman that does he's retired, he does handyman work, you expect that site to be a little outdated and just, sure. you know, it, it adds to his character, right? But if it's a bigger firm that's doing, you know, paying, charging lots of money for these gorgeous redesigns, then you want that to be a nicer looking website. So even within an industry, it can vary based on who you're hiring. And there's reasons to hire both types of contractors. So it's really, you know, you've got to know your where where you're at on the spectrum in your industry and decide if your website reflects that. Mm. Uh, we're we're going down a rabbit hole. It's my I know. fault, but yeah. one thing <laughs> that's coming to, to it, what's coming to mind for me is yeah. right now, like vintage, rustic, old fashioned, really is like the new style. So yeah. I'm imagining like that handyman who he's well off. He does incredible. People call him because of him. Right. Nothing to do with his website. Why not still create a modern website that looks like it was made five years ago? Like give it like <laughs> this, like this modern functionality where That's like you great. can still, yeah. you can still click to call and you can still email him, but it looks right. like it was made. I don't know if that's trendy or at not. At least mobile <laughs> friendly, right? Yeah. At the very least, mobile friendly. Let's yeah, do that. Right. Mm -hmm. I agree. <laughs> so a lot has brought you, you know, to today where, you know, you've got your successful business. You're, you've done, I saw, you look like you're on the news, something yeah. like that. Yeah, I do that once a month or so. I go on Good Day Rochester and talk about healthy lifestyles. So they call me the lifestyle blogger, Emily okay. Carpenter. Yeah. <laughs> so I go on and I talk about um, just having healthy choices, creating healthy choices and a healthy lifestyle. Yeah. And when we first met, it seemed like making healthy choices, having a more healthy lifestyle has really just you know, not just business, but life, love, everything gets better when you start doing that, right? Absolutely. Um, and yeah. I don't know your whole story. I only know bits and pieces. The listener might not know any of it. Yeah. Um, was there a time in your life that you were not healthy? And with all mm -hmm. these things from Savvy Nom Nom to Marvy Moms to being featured on Good Day uh, Rochester to starting your business, like, was there a change, a tipping point? And can we kind of walk through um, some of the things that happened from then to the lady you are today? Yeah, sure. Um, where do you want to start? I mean, we could go back to when I so was. So let's, let's start yeah. in that pain point. Like, was there a uh, moment that like, hmm. you, maybe you were depressed or maybe someone said something to you or was there a reason to start changing or. Yeah. I mean, there's always reasons, right? And um, I had lots of them. Um, so I guess the painful part was when I was a hundred pounds overweight, more than a hundred pounds overweight. And I was working for a company, a legal publisher, and I was an editor and it was, I was just starting this job and I would go into work and I would sit at the computer and read these lines of manuscript and just, you know, I go to sleep at night and I could just see lines going, ahead, you know, in front of me, like that was because we were taking manuscript and then coding it, getting it ready to go online or into print. And it was just line after line of manuscript. And the thing was, when I sat down at the computer, I was experiencing a condition called pseudotumor cerebri, which also is known as idiopathic intracranial hypertension. So when, so I, my body produces excess amounts of spinal fluid. And when I'm overweight, it puts undue pressure on my optic nerve and causes double vision. So I wow. was sitting down at the computer and instead of seeing the manuscript that I was seeing, I was seeing double of that. Oh my God. And then having to try to see that in a way that I could actually um, work with it was difficult. And I didn't tell anybody this. I, you know, I had experienced this years before in college. Um, and I, I went to a doctor and he said to me, sometimes chubby girls have trouble with their vision, lose weight. That was a pain point hearing that. 
And I thought, okay, I'll go do something about it. And I did. And I lost the weight, but then I gained it back. And then I gained it back more than I had been before. So that an even heavier weight. And the problem, which only happens sometimes in the mornings was happening more and more. So every time I turned my head to um, change lanes in the car or, you know, just sitting at the desk or if I stood up to any like weird motion, it would cause the double vision. And I didn't really know what this looked like. I didn't know what was really happening. I just remembered what my doctor had said and I wasn't ready to do anything about it. So I just dealt with it and I I kept, it was my secret. You know, I didn't want anybody to know. And it was, you know, sitting there and, um, you know, I had a new manager and I had new colleagues and this was all around um, 9-11. So, you know, this was like a, everybody at that point was, so it was like a month before that I started my job. I started my job that August. So it was a month before 9-11 that I started the job. So that period of time too, was just like, you know, life is short, you know, we need to really pay attention to what we're doing, what choices we're making. Um, and we were, we were right next to a federal building. So on the day of 9-11, um, it was scary because we didn't know if, federal buildings were going to be targeted all over the country. So it was, you know, we were all sent home. Um, so the, the, the point for me was, you know, not being able to make eye contact. I'm a person that likes to make eye contact. I like to really engage in conversation and I couldn't look my boss in the eye because I would start getting double vision and I couldn't oh look, I God. couldn't look at somebody, you know, and it made me feel shifty. Like it made me feel like, um, I wasn't interacting in the way that I, I prefer to. And I felt really disconnected with the people around me. Um, so when there was a program um, offered at my workplace to um, have a weekly meeting and weigh in and, and check in on, on, you know, what we're eating and everything, I signed up and I had already been doing some other things um, to help with losing weight, but that was, another piece that I added to it and had some regimented food plan that helped me just to focus on the right foods and not the other foods. Um, but even then I still ate some of the stuff that, you know, um, was triggering for me, but I did it in smaller amounts. And so I lost the weight and then, um, a couple of months, um, I'm trying to think of the timeline here, a couple of years later, um, you know, when I had, I, I started losing the weight. So it took me over a year from that pain point, you know, to where I was ready to do something about it Mm -hmm. and the program being offered at work. And I, I took that. And so I started to lose the weight. I lost a bunch of weight. I lost over a hundred pounds. And then I started seeing, um, you know, I started seeing some great benefits from that. And then I had an aunt get sick and she was out of town. And so I started changing my schedule at work so I could, you know, go visit her. She was out of town and I would go do that. And my, my work schedule changed. And I started to see that I kind of liked the different work schedule and working from home. And I had this opportunity to work on a big project that, um, I got to work even more from home. So I, I ended up working, um, four, 10, three, 10 hour days. So I cut my hours to 30 hours and had a longer weekend so I could travel when I needed to. And, um, and then when she died, I, you know, one of the visits I had with her, um, she was, she was not hungry a lot of times, you know, she's because of the, um, what she was going through. And she said, I feel like I want, um, a roast beef sandwich. And I was like, I'll go get it for you, you know? And I went and got it and I got the meal And then I got stuff for myself and I ate it. And I was like, that wasn't so bad. You know, like I could handle that. I can handle that every now and then. And then I went back to, from that one meal, I started eating. And a year later I got on the scale. I was 60 pounds heavier in one year. Yeah. Just like that. So I realized then that I needed some more help and I started finding help to help me with, um, getting my food on track. So, and within that space of time, so three days before my aunt died, I filed for my DBA 
for whiz bang web solutions. Um, then within a year or two, I was, um, I was an LLC, which I still am today. Um, but so there was a lot going on at that time where just a lot of things were happening and I started making changes, um, for being a healthier person. And by 2000, um, boy, I'm losing track of the years. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's good there, that it's long enough ago that it's almost behind you, you know? Right. Yeah. I mean, it is and it isn't because yeah. I know that I still have to do things every day to stay healthy. You know, everything, my health today is not dependent on what I did 16 years ago. It's what I do today and the choices I make right now. So I never can rest completely and think I've got it made. I don't, I, you know, I really don't because that person that made those unhealthy choices still lives inside of me and she's trying to get out every day. So I have to be aware of that and make healthier choices every moment. So, and some bad, some moments are better than others. I'm not always making the healthiest choice every moment, but I do try my best. Yeah. What could I or any listener do today to at the very least make today a total win um, get some momentum, maybe do the same thing three days in a row, start checking that win box and get that positive momentum. What, what are some of those choices that you make still on a daily basis um, that I could maybe start today? That's a really great, great question. Um, so a lot of the things that I do are maintain my mindset over everything else. So I start my day with a gratitude list. And so every morning I get up and I write 10 things I'm grateful for. Um, I also send love to people that I may be having an issue with, you know, and this is just a list and there are people that have been on there for years and that's okay. I love them. I'm not going to name any of them (laughs) (laughs) to protect the innocent. Right. But there, you know, I, I write this list out of 10 things I'm grateful for. Um, I, three people that I have been having an issue with, but I have six on my list right now. So that's okay. Um, I also include myself on that list because I have to have grace with myself and forgive myself for when I'm not making the best choices. So I include myself on that list. I think it's real important to um, remember that we're doing our best. So I I add myself to that list. So there's six people, but I'm one of them, right? Um, I I just want to highlight real quick. I love that sending love to yourself as well. There's almost something and it's not intentional, but something condescending about sending love to all these other people that maybe need it, but forgetting to send it to yourself as if you've already reached the level that you're looking down on them. Oh, I pity you. And I know that by no means that's how people look at it, Right. but It's smart not to forget to actually send love to yourself as well. You need and deserve it as well. So absolutely. Yeah. And I'm I want to be clear though that my list is not condescending or looking down on people. It's just oh my god. No, not at all. But it's like it's these people that I care about, but I'm have, you know, I may have like a mindset issue that needs to be worked on or something, you know, just tenuous about that relationship. So I put them on the list to just help me to remember that I care for them right. above all else. And then that helps me to be more present when I do speak with them. So that's, that's what I mean by that. And right. the, I do have a prayer list also, and even, you know, and in those two, like, so I, that's another thing that I do is before my feet hit the floor every morning, my knees are on the floor and I'm praying and I'm praying for people that I care about. Um, and for the whole world, you know, like I, I spread that out to everybody because I think we, you know, I, I really believe that we're all connected and that we can't want something good for ourselves without wanting something good for every other person. So, um, so I do, I spread that out uh, around the world. And then, so that's part of my routine also is, is prayer meditation. Um, and so those are really important things that anyone can do. And I tell people, even if you just meditate for five minutes of, you don't have to call it even meditation. I like to call it quiet time where it's just five minutes where you don't look at your phone, you don't look at anything and you can set a timer for five minutes to just do nothing and just sit there and be present and see what comes out of that. And sometimes it feels like nothing is coming out of it, but I tell you on the days that I skip it because I think I don't have time, everybody has five minutes, right? Mm -hmm. If I think I don't have time, then 
I notice later on that I'm more irritable. I, you know, I'm a little bit snappy and I'm not as present in the situation that I'm in. And especially if I skip it for a few days, it gets that, that effect gets compounded. So it's important for me every day to take that time in the morning to just do nothing and have no expectations. I love this. And and you're totally right. It is a compounding effect. Um, Just recorded it earlier today, but people listened to it last week. My last podcast with Linda Healer, um, she's a life and executive coach. And she was talking about how all these small actions do Mm -hmm. add up to something big. So when you can be taking positive action in your wellness, in your life, in your health, in your mindset, at the same time, if someone pokes you in the arm 5,000 times, that little yeah. nudge will start to hurt. So it can <laughs> right. be a compound effect in a negative way as well. So sure. putting in those positive things in place sounds like gratitude, prayer, meditation allows you to create this compound effect where now, I mean, can you compare and contrast? Do you feel like the same human you were 15, 20 <laughs> years ago, or do you feel like a completely different person? Yeah, that's that's a good question too. I, I feel like I've always been me. Right. Right. I've always been Emily. And the thing is, how to what degree do I express that with the world? And that is just so much more now than it was back then. So I think before I was living, you know, I was limiting myself. I was living inside, you know, putting myself into this tiny little box where now I feel like I've allowed myself to be more of who I am. And that's a process still, you know, I I'm still learning. I'm always trying to learn something new. I do a lot of self, I read a lot of self-improvement or um, mindset books to keep my head in a good space. I also listen to podcasts that are positive that help me to do that. And just all those things, because, you know, we're not always surrounded by the most positive people. And when you go on to social media and see everybody having these perfect lives and you compare it to your own life, you know, we call that um, comparing our insides to someone else's outsides. It's not mm-hmm. always a great comparison. Mm-hmm. So it looks like all these great things are happening for someone else, but not for you. Right. But if you had one day with that person inside their head, you'd see a different picture. So I, you know, and when you have a conversation with someone and they tell you all the bad things that are happening and all their aches and pains and all of the mental anguish and all the horrible things at work and, you know, all these things that people tend to get trapped into in their minds. Um, really that can, you know, that can also bring down your energy. So if you let it, right. So you have to protect that. And so the way I protect that is having positive input, surrounding myself as much as possible with positive people and listening to positive messaging. And I don't watch the news. I just don't watch it. I haven't watched the news in 10 or 12 years at, at minimum. I, there's, nothing for me to, to watch. I, if there's something important that's happening in the world, people tell me about it. I right. get, I get, you know, it's not like I have, don't know anything that's happening in the world, but a lot of it, I just don't need to know in that level of detail that's available right now, because you're hearing one person's truth or one news source's truth. Or even if you look at 10 different news, news sources, you're getting more of the full truth. But by then it's too much information and I'm not focused on what I can control, which is the thing that's in front of me and, Mm -hmm. and my own life. So do you watch the news when you're on it? I don't (laughs) No, (laughs) (laughs) No, there was a lot, like I, I do watch it to just see how I've done and what I might do better the next time. Right. I will watch it for that, but there was maybe a year or two that I couldn't even watch myself on TV. So I didn't, wouldn't even watch it. And I don't see it, you know, as it's playing, I see it later in the replay. Um, but I don't, I don't tend to even watch that sometimes. Yeah. So when did you start blogging and podcasting and like, why did you do it? Like, was there, what was the motivation behind it? How yeah. long ago it was, you know, those kind of things. Yeah. Um, my first blog was, I was going to say what it was, but you know, my first blog was, I forgot all about it because it's no longer out there was called, um, try it for 21. 
And it was about trying something new for 21 days. Like it. And so I did things like I tried um, not complaining for 21 days, no complaining and no gossip for 21 days. And wow, if you haven't done that, I highly suggest trying that. It's very powerful to see how things change and how your mindset can change when you consciously decide not to say negative things. I come from a, a Jewish family, so it's almost like I can't even open my mouth for 21 days because... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the guilt, right? You know, <laughs> but there's like, you know, it doesn't matter what the culture is, like yeah. that is Oh my gosh. Any yeah. culture can claim that, right? I think there's so many different um cultures that could claim that. And so, yeah, when people say it's, you know, like, well, my heritage or whatever, but we all have that. We all have, you know, like everybody wants you to eat the food and everybody wants you to, you know, can pour on the guilt. Like there's so many so many cultures that do that. Um, so, but so anybody can do this and try right. at least try to, right. and it's interesting. What's most interesting about that is to see how other people change when you don't engage in that, because when they realize that you're not coming back with a reply in a negative way, and you're not going to gossip and you're not going to complain that they start to change their things too. So you making one change, just you being you and deciding that for a little while, um, it has uh, an effect to everyone around you. So, so that was my first blog was try it for 21 and it didn't last that long. Cause I started running out of things that I wanted to try for 21 days and write about. It was a lot of fun when I did it. Did the um, blog only, and this is just a joke, but did the, the blog only last for 21 <laughs> days? I don't know. It might've lasted <laughs> for 42 days. I don't know. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah. It didn't last for, didn't last for very long. And then I decided to, um, create a blog for moms and that was Marvie moms. And I wanted to show different perspectives of being a mom because when I became a mom, I was in all these different mommy groups online and people saying, this is the right way to do it. And no, this is the right way to do it. You know, cloth diapers versus disposable breastfeeding versus bottle feeding and, you know, how to discipline your kids or how to, um, how, how to raise them. And there's all these different things where mommies are fighting with each other. And I wanted a place where it was safe to just show that there are different styles and that nothing is better or worse, but we all have a choice and that we should respect that and that we're all doing our best. And so I had a bunch of moms writing for me and one by one, they fell off, you know, things just weren't, weren't working out. They weren't as committed to it as I was for, um, for the writing. So I just started doing it just for myself. And then I started, um, getting interested in natural medicine more and taking classes. And I went to homeopathy school for three years, herbal medicine school for two years. And I became certified as an aromatherapist and, um, over a big span of time, uh, I eventually became a Reiki master. So I had all these different things, um, that I wanted to share. And so, when I started learning about essential oils, I went to uh, a friend and she sold me some oils and I spent a lot of money and I had no idea what I bought. You know, I didn't even know what I bought. I just bought the kit. And so I started doing some research to see if that was the best oils that I could have bought or not. And I realized there were a lot of options and I interviewed, I think 23 companies and I posted 10 of those online. And Marvy Moms is still known for aroma the aromatherapy aspect. And I created this essential oil dilution calculator that people are used that use they use it daily. Wow. Um, it's been something that's um, used again and again. So I haven't actively written on that blog in a long time, um, but it's still something that I pay attention to. I still have people that follow that blog, um, especially for the calculator. And um I met people all over the world because of that. I received a ton of oils because every company that I interviewed sent me five or six bottles. So I right. had a couple thousand dollars worth of essential oils. Wow. So that's when I realized I need to do something to learn about this. So I'm not hurting myself or the people I care about with oils because they are precious and there's, um, it's not just do what you want to with them. So I started getting educated 
And while I was searching for an aromatherapy school, I learned about homeopathy and herbal medicine and started down those paths also. And those have all come together. So I wrote about all these different topics on Marby moms and, uh, but it, it brought me, uh, it opened up the world for me through a lot of it through Facebook, because I started becoming like an admin in some aromatherapy groups and became friends with people from all over the world in aromatherapy. And it's been, it was been, you know, I'm still connected with these people and it's been an amazing experience to just see that the world is so much bigger, you know, when then just where you are in, you know, in space and time. So it's incredible yeah, that's, connecting. That's my, yeah, it's, yeah. So that has been my, my blogging journey, journey. Um, I think you asked you about, well, I don't know if you asked about the podcast, but. <laughs> and we didn't talk a ton about, um, nom nom. Some people listen to the podcast. Some people watch it. Do you want to show us your mug? I, I saw that earlier. Today. Oh, my savvy nom nom mug here. Yeah. yeah. I think the next one I'm going to um, just have an imprint of lipstick because I usually have a lipstick. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I love that. That's yeah. smart. Yeah. So, yeah. So Savvy Nom Nom is based on my experience of having lost over a hundred pounds over 18 years ago now, I think. Um, so that is where I help people to get smart about food, right? Savvy nom nom. So right. tell me smart about food. And for that, like if people ask me, where'd you come up with that name? Or, you know, they don't understand what it means. And one of my first names was that I thought of was eating alternatives. I actually own that domain name hmm. because I wanted to help people think about other things to do besides eat as a reaction to life. So mm. what I did was I ate if I was happy, I ate if I was sad, I ate if I was angry, and basically I ate to numb. So it didn't matter what it was. I didn't like those extreme emotions. And so I would numb them with food because it was a distraction of something to just do for a few minutes and not yeah. um, think about what I was, you know, having to was not wanting to think about. And so Savvy Nom Nom is about that. It's about helping people see that there are other things besides food that can help. And so all these things that I do, I've learned, you know, all the morning routine and everything that I do, that's what keeps me in check every day that I can, um, you know, I still have unhealthy choices and doing those things every day helps me to catch them a lot quicker and to pull back. And that's where, um, if you go to savvy nom you'll see at the top of the site talking about the 21 day food reset. Mm. Um, I like that 21 days and that is a place, you know, that's something that I've done over the past over a decade or almost a couple decades now of when I start to see myself going off the rails a little bit, I pull back and do a reset and just go back to the basics. And usually it's something that I've let go in one way or another, you know, maybe I have stopped doing meditation or I've stopped doing some sort of movement. Um, another thing I do in the morning is movement and I do some yoga every day and that helps to just get my body moving. And it's also a form of meditation. So, um, I forget what I was saying there. Sorry. Well, I, I want to <laughs> look into that reset because I just recently did a cleanse, um, where no dairy, no sugar, Right. No grains of any kind. Um, what else? No meat. So I basically mm. just had vegetables and a late amount of beans and a late amount of fruit for seven yeah. days wow. and felt great. I could feel my liver repairing itself. Nice. Um, but then very shortly after, I'm still eating probably 500% more vegetables, but I relapsed in terms of you know, like I'm drinking a couple beers here and there, or right. oh, maybe I'll have dark chocolate. It's not too much sugar. And I feel like that seven day cleanse was maybe 14 days too short. So uh, yeah. I want to look into maybe doing a 21 day thing. So, um, is that, do you have a hub? Do you have like a specific spot people can go to experience all these things or should yeah. we just put them all in the show notes in, in separate places, you know? Yeah, we'll definitely put them in the show notes. I would say I'll that would be helpful. Um, I don't have 
like one hub, right? You know, probably if you what looked at me on Facebook, you'll see where you know some of my public posts I put out there for when I'm when I create new content, different places. That's one way to to find all that. But yeah, there's there's not really one place, and I've been thinking about that. So that may be something coming up. Yeah, I mean, is it, the simplest way is to set up like a link tree. Or the more sophisticated way because you're driving traffic to your website is just have, you know, whizbang solutions slash, is it whizbangsolutions.com? It's it's whizbangweb.com. So whizbangweb.com slash hub and then set it up there. Yeah. Well, you can go to whizbangweb.com and some of these things are listed on my portfolio page. So you can find some of them there. Um, but yeah, that will be, eventually I'll, I'll have a spot uh, like that. And I have a couple of things that are just not quite right, you know, so I'm not going to tell you those here um, because I, I wouldn't want to send people there just yet, but there's, um, that is definitely something coming up. Perfect. In, in a moment, I want to go rapid fire round, yeah. um, but I do, you know, still want to plug the podcast. I, I know it's on hold, I believe, right? But it's just another example of how tremendously diverse you are and all the things <laughs> you're doing. So tell us a little about uh, about the podcast you were hosting. Yeah. So one thing um, we talked about before the show is that I think it's important to follow your heart. Mm-hmm. And I think as an entrepreneur, that's the the freedom that I feel like I have in that space so that no one's my boss and I can, I can follow my heart and do the things I want to do. And the thing with the podcast was I didn't know that I was going to do a podcast, but I do this, I do this thing called the mind movie. Um, there's a woman that created that concept. I'm not going to be able to remember her name at the moment, but I've been doing this for lots of years where I create a mind movie every year. And I put the things and the slideshow of that, that I want to have in my life. And then I look at that throughout the year. And at the end of the year, I look back and say, wow, all the, a lot of these things have happened. And so every year, more and more things come true. And one year, I don't know why I put it on there, but I put podcasts on mm-hmm. my mind movie. I have no idea why I didn't, cool. I had only just started listening to podcasts. I listened to maybe one or two, you know, podcast ever. And I decided I was going to do a podcast and then I bought a microphone. Then I signed up for a podcasting conference all before I ever recorded my first episode of choice happens. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, nice. So, so it's just like this intuition of do this thing and then do this thing. And then, you know, and then the pieces fall together for me in that way. So with choice happens, the idea is that, um, you know, the other phrase that people say of what happens, right. Not I don't sure. know if we can I don't think we can say that word. <laughs> oh shit, shit happens. <laughs> right, shit happens, yeah. Yeah. We can <laughs> right. say that. Okay, good. So that is the usual phrase that people say like, oh, there's nothing I can do about it. That's just life, right? But there's always something you can do about the situation you're in, whether you can change the physical part of it or the mental part of it or the emotional part of it or the spiritual part of it. You start with one piece And then other pieces take care of themselves as you do that. So the idea of inertia, you know, that objects in motion tend to stay in motion. Objects at rest tend to stay at rest unless acted upon by an outside force. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you got to create that force for yourself and just pick one spot to start, one thing to start and do that. So the podcast is interviewing people that have discovered this and made different choices and decided that they're taking charge of who they are and who they, you know, who they want to be and then making that happen in their lives. So that's what the podcast is. The one, the first episode is, um, an interview with my son. It's only three or four minutes. And I think it's the best episode that there is. He talks about the worry wall and how, um, we, you know, we come up against this worry wall and it stops us and you need to, you know, break through that to get to the life you want to live. And so that's what that's what choice happens is about. I this is fascinating. Um, I want to listen to the podcast, and I Great. love that you ultimately started before you started. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't, one of the affirmations I live by is "act as if I already have what I want" because that'll Absolutely. attract 
that'll attract happiness and success into my life. And yeah. you were you were signing up for the podcast. You were visualizing it. You were starting it before you ever even started it. I didn't even know what I was doing. I didn't even know <laughs> that's what I was doing. I just wrote podcasts on there. I was like, what am I doing? I don't even know anything about it. And then I had a microphone and then I had a conference and made all these great connections that are still connections today. And then I had a podcast and now I'm on your podcast. So yeah. You know, I don't, I don't always understand why I'm drawn to do things, but when I get a certain feeling about something, I trust that and I follow it until it becomes clear, you know, and every now and then it's like, oh, you know, it's not the thing that I thought it was, but it leads to something else. And that's okay too. But each thing leads to something else. And so when I get that intuition, you know, and when, our listeners get that intuition. I think it's important to follow that and see where it leads. Yeah. I love that. Um, I'm going to do this. If any listener is, I mean, if you have an intuition, it sounds like just go start and there's no shame in pivoting, shutting it down, just doing right. something different. But that's the only shame that you have the intuition and I forget if I talked about on this on the podcast or just in general, but it's been coming up a lot lately. It's almost a curse to have that intuition or that skill set or that drive mm. and not do anything with it. Like I know back yeah. way back in my life, I would in terms of health and personal development and all these things, I knew the answer but I wasn't mm -hmm. living the answer. Yes. So it was shameful for me to even try to mentor mm -hmm. someone, let alone it, it became a curse that I had these answers. I had the intuition, but I wasn't taking action. So my call to action for people is if you feel like you have the intuition, start and see what happens. It doesn't have to be perfect, right? And it doesn't have to be big either. It can be something small. And I think the saddest thing, and that's, you know, what choice happens is about too, is when you have this idea of something you want to do and you're not taking any step toward it because it feels like it's too much, then you never know whether it's going to work out or not. You know, when I, when I decided to quit my full-time job and start a business, I didn't know if that was the right thing or not. I just knew I had to try it or I would never know. And there's things that you just have to have a little bit of faith and take the tiniest little step and see where that leads. Because if you don't take that first step, you're not going to get to the last step. Right. Right. So, um, and I think where anxiety comes from for me, cause I've, I've had anxiety my entire life, you know, um, I really haven't in the last good amount of time. Like it's, you know, since I started doing the things that I do every day, um, I don't have anything like the level of anxiety I had for the first big portion of my life. But what happened, um, what happens for me is when what I know that I want, or when I have an idea of how I want to be or how I want to live and what I'm doing does not match, that's where I have anxiety. And mm -hmm. I think that is true for anybody that if there's, you know, if you're feeling anxious and you don't know how to, you know, handle that. A lot of people will go to the doctor and get medication. And I did this at one point and it helps me get through a really tough period of time. But at some point I was, I learned other avenues and I was able to stop that medication. And I think that, you know, rather than do that, or maybe you need that for a little, I'm never I'm not against medication when it's really needed. I think it can really help through some tough times. However, I think if you're not also trying to find ways that you'll never get past that completely or be able to come off of that medication ever. Um, so it's, you know, if you can match up even in small ways, um, the tiniest thing can make a big difference in how you feel. So you might look at what am I doing that isn't matching who I want to be, you know, who do I really want to be? And am I doing those things? And if I'm not, then what's some small thing I can do. You know, when I wanted a king size bed, I bought all the bedding first. I didn't buy Ooh, the bed. You know, yeah. I was getting ready. Like I had everything ready until I found the perfect bed. And then I bought the bed, but I had everything else ready. So you can get things ready to bring that into your life. And sometimes that's creating a vacuum, just getting rid of things so that 
you know, things that aren't serving you, things that aren't working in your life, you start clearing those things out and then the right things have room to come in and you have the vision to see them because when you're cluttered and everything is around you that you don't like to see, that's not serving you, that's not healthy, then it's hard to see past that. But when you clear all those things out, you can start to see the things that are meant to be for you. This is powerful stuff, Emily. I <laughs> I want to tell the listeners at home, if this is resonating and you're gaining value, please send this to a friend and share it because I, I think everyone should hear this message. Oh, thanks, Ben. Um, rapid fire, just yeah. short, sweet, fill in the blank or either or questions sure. to get to know you a little bit better. Sound yeah. good? Sure. We'll start with potentially a longer one. Uh, favorite thing to do in Western New York? What are you doing on the weekend when you're you're putting the entrepreneurship down? You're just going to have a little bit of fun. Uh, yeah. What do you like about the region? I like getting outside, especially this time of year. And my favorite is the beach. So I'm a big um, beach glass comber. So if there's a if there's even a speck of beach glass on the sand, mm. I find it and I pick it up. Yep. <laughs> You know, my favorite, the other day I was at the beach and there was a woman and she was looking really hard, but she didn't look as experienced as me. And I could sense it. She was really trying to find something. And I was just quickly walking back to my car and I saw one and I picked it up and I said, here's one for you. And she was so happy to have a piece of beach glass, you know, so I had plenty of it. I'm happy to, to share it. (laughs) Good to know. Good to know. Um, Coffee or tea? coffee. What about yeah. beer, beer, wine, or water? Water. Yeah. Um, do you have, so your favorite season summer or summer? Yeah, it's definitely summer this time when it's starting to get warm where you can have a little bit cooler. That's nice too, but I love the sunshine. Any, um, clean cheats, any favorite clean cheats? Like, any um, what? <laughs> like a, by clean cheat, I mean like it's healthy, but it's still kind of cheaty. Oh, clean like, sheets. Like, like, ah. peanut, like peanut butter balls with M&Ms in it. I like. I don't think that sense. counts. <laughs> <laughs> Probably doesn't. I don't think that's a clean cheat. Dates. I like okay. dates. Yeah. Medjool dates. Those are my, those are my clean sheet. Yeah. They're um, very, they're sugared and they're dense, but they're, they hit the spot. Yeah. I love it. I, I got to eat more dates. <laughs> yeah. What else? Let, let's just do, um. So podcast or books, what, what are you listening to right now? What are you reading right now? Or yeah. does anything stand out as a podcast or book that you'd recommend or anybody? I don't read books anymore. I listen to books. So cool. the book that I'm listening to right now, which isn't really a book, it's a lecture series is Vulnerability by Brene Brown. I love all of her stuff. Um, and a book or a, I mean, a podcast. I have a whole bunch of different ones. Anything that's positive, I like for business. I like um, I like Pat Flynn. Um, it was one of, that was the first podcast I ever listened to. Smart, smart passive, smart passive income. income. That was the first one I ever listened to. Um, but I like uh, Lewis Howe's School of Greatness. I like um, the One Thing. That's a a really powerful um, concept. Is the One Thing, and so sometimes I tune into that podcast. I love it. Um, You've been incredible. I'm going to post all the links in the show notes. I want people to reach out, um, read the blog. It seems like you've got so many tools, Emily. I'm wondering, because we we only had, you know, 45 minutes to an hour together today. If we were to talk for another hour, is there anything that maybe the listener is curious about or something that I could have asked that is still on your mind? Anything else you want to bring to the table today? Huh. Um, I guess just to, just to reinforce that if there's something that you want to do, take one step today to do that. I think that's all that any of us can do. And the way I like to look at that is what is the next right thing that I can do today? And so if you don't know what that is, just look around and see one thing, even if it's picking up something off the floor that needs to be picked up or washing your dishes you know, anything, and then just start some sort of forward motion, even if it's not the thing that you want it to be, or you think you want it to be, because that will lead to more motion. And so I think the important thing is to just do something, do the next right thing. 
I love emotion leads to more emotion. It does. <laughs> You've been incredible. I've already said that. Um, I say this all the time, but it's super genuine. I need to have you back on so we can dive even deeper. I'd um, love but- that. Till then, I appreciate you coming on the show, Emily. All right. Thanks, Ben. Thanks for listening to Rochester Business Connections. Don't forget to share this, rate, and comment on your favorite platform. You can also email me, ben at balbertmarketing.com. Let's connect soon. Until then, keep thriving, everyone.